Tim, and I'm uh, delighted to be here as always. Um, I'd like to thank uh, St. John Fisher for sponsoring this and the uh, Council of New York State uh, Council on Humanities. I think um, uh, I'm used to speaking more commonly to hospital uh, crowds. So don't be, when you see these pictures, these are not the machines we have today. I put them up for <laughs> medical interest because I've got some pictures of old iron lungs and old dialysis machines. Um, uh, and they're interesting to most people, but they're not the way things are now. I, but I wanted to uh, take particular notice uh, of how many ventilators, these are iron lungs, are in this small area and how few people there are working with them. Not at all like our ICUs today where we may have, you know, a nurse and a respiratory therapist and a patient technician and a, somebody else coming in, four or five people in one room. And I think that that's incredibly important because if we really have a pandemic when we don't have the resources, we need to expand our capacity. We're not used to doing that. We need to be able to think creatively when we're taxed with uh, new problems. Pandemic certainly is a possible problem. We've had three pandemics in, in the 20th century. Um, and they say that, quote, we're overdue, so we should be prepared. And typically, and again, look at all of these iron lungs in, I don't know, somebody's gym, I guess, right? But that's what a real pandemic would look like. This was polio. So an iron lung, for those of you who aren't familiar, just is a big, big tank like that. Um, and there'd be negative pressure generated in the tank to suck the lungs out, to, to pull on the diaphragm to make air come into the lungs. We don't do that now. I mean, it's much different now where we actually put a tube down the throat and blow with forceful or positive pressure into the lungs. But this is the way things used to be. And again, I'm seeing dozens and dozens and dozens of these all in one room. Um, pandemics typically, the, the major ethical issue in a pandemic is what we call in the ethics literature a, a, a question about allocation of scarce resources. When there's not enough to go around, who gets it and who doesn't? And who gets to decide? So in the past, uh, we have examples of scarce resources where we've had to allocate antibiotics, for instance. We just heard a wonderful talk on uh, venereal disease and antibiotics. But the next piece of that is to say that uh, in World War II, when penicillin was available, it wasn't really highly available. And so it was given to the soldiers who had gonorrhea and not the ones that got shot. The ones that got shot weren't going to go back and fight. Once they got gonorrhea, could get the penicillin and go back to the front lines. And if you've ever been in the military, you want to put more, more bodies on the front line so that you're better able to fight. And this is one of the very interesting early allocation decisions is that the penicillin wasn't going to go to those that might die or do very poorly, but to those who would do well or could be able to fight again. The iron lungs were allocated or rationed um, during the polio epidemics. Uh, in, in the current time, on a regular basis have to allocate scarce organs um, for transplant. And that is a lot of the area that I am involved with. I take care of uh, transplant uh, kidney patients and um, have been involved